with code. And we're going to go to a website today called JS Fiddle, which lets you write JavaScript and HTML and CSS right in your web browser. Again, with just you don't need any tools. You can just start learning right now. So we're going to go to jsfiddle.net. Now, if you actually create a login and sign up for the site, you can save your work. You don't have to, but it'll make things easier if you want to come back and change things and keep learning. Um, so if you want to sign up, pause the video, go to the sign up, come back here, that way you can save your work. So you can see here we have four windows. This one is for HTML, this one's for CSS, this one's for JavaScript. So let's start with some basic HTML where you're going to create a div, which is uh, sort of a building block of HTML. It's a section of HTML. So we're going to do div and it has a closing bracket like this. And divs can have anything in them just about, um, including more divs. But for now, we'll just put some text. Now if we hit run, we'll see here our output, some text. We've created uh, a very simple website. If we want to make this look a little different, we can give this div an ID. It can be anything you want, it's just what you're going to identify this section with. So I'm going to just call it demo. And then over in CSS, the way you get an ID is by using the pound sign, then demo, then we put all of our style inside curly braces after that, so just like that. And now we can do color blue. Remember to end your line with a semicolon. CSS lines end with semicolon just like JavaScript does. So if we run this, there we go. Blue text. So you can use this to style over here. But now let's write some JavaScript to do some other things. Um, like before, we can do document get element by ID demo dot enter HTML equals and if we run this, we see that now our text is other text. So this runs and replaces some text with other text, giving us our output. But we don't want this to happen right away. We're going we're gonna to change things around a little bit here. So over here, you see this on load. We want to change this to no wrap in head. So we want to put this right here. Difference being that JS Fiddle does a little bit of work for you in the background. and tells the browser when to run your JavaScript. And there's a couple options, and the options it defaults to is as soon as everything loads. We don't want that. We just want the JavaScript to be there. So now if we run this, you can see it stays at some text. This line of code never gets run. So we're now going to make it run using a button. So button. Same as the div, you then need to close it with a slash button, like so. And then let's put some text in the button. Click run. Now we have a button. It doesn't do anything, but we have one. So button, just like div has an ID, a button can have an ID too, but it can also have an on click equals. And you can actually put JavaScript right in here. So we could actually grab out all of this code and stick it right inside of there. And if we do that, you can see as soon as I click it, it changes to other text. But this is pretty long and really fills up all of our HTML with JavaScript. It's not really the way we want to do it. So let's get rid of that.
put this back down here. And now how are we going to call this up when our button is clicked? The first way I'm going to show you uh, is just to give you an understanding of how functions work. So let's make a new line on top here and type function change text parentheses curly bracket then down below here another curly bracket and then indent this line just to keep things straight as this is inside of change text so now the way a function works is it's just a collection of things you can do so this function only does one thing right now but now it's just called change text so when when change text gets called all of this gets called so now back up here I can just write change text run that and you can see it works just the same so not only does that clean this up but I can also do other things like down here I could now do document get element by ID demo dot style dot color equals red let's run that you can see now when I click the button both of these things happen so it's you can make collections of um, things you want to run inside of a function rather than trying to put all this into on click so it's a way of grouping things that you want to happen so that's one way to do it but the reality is most people will never do things this way because JavaScript by itself is a little clunky. I mean, you write all this code just to change some text. You would think there's probably a better way to do it, and that's because there is. Someone has created something called jQuery, which has been around for a long time, and it's a collection of tools to make JavaScript much easier to use. So you can get jQuery inside of JS Fiddle from this other dropdown, which says right now no library. It's just pure JavaScript. But we're going to switch to jQuery. So if you click the dropdown and scroll up, jQuery 2.0.2. The version doesn't really matter. Um, you just want to get a more recent version. So we're going with this one. So now, when using jQuery, we actually want to go back to onload so that our code is all set up as soon as everything starts. And now let's get rid of on click. That way there's no JavaScript in our HTML at all. But let's give our button an ID so we know how to get it. Just like the div, we're going to just have it be our click button. So let's now write our first jQuery code. So to use jQuery, you start with a dollar sign, like so. Then in order to get the object you want to work with, you use you still use quotes, then you use the pound sign, just like CSS, the same way we got an ID over here to change the color to blue is exactly the same way that jQuery works. So we can do demo dot click. So this actually lets us get the click function down here in the JavaScript, so we don't have to put any JavaScript up here. But this gets a little tricky because we have to do an opening parentheses, and then we have to say when click is called run our function so another parentheses and then opening bracket closing bracket closing parentheses semicolon so the code there is a little weird but if you follow the brackets and the parentheses it should look like this We'll just put our code right in here and get rid of our function. Let's run that. And let's see if it works. Doesn't work. So, in order to figure out what you've done wrong, 
Ah, I can already see what I've done. But let's go through it. Ins you can do an inspect element by right clicking and go into console. Cannot set inner property HTML of null. And you can see it's highlighted this line of code for me. And the reason, if you haven't already figured it out, is because I use demo, which is the name of the div, not the name of the button. So we're going to grab the actual button name and put it in here instead. Click it. Now you can see it works. But we've still got this big document, get element by ID. And the cool thing is with jQuery, just like you got the button up here, you can do the exact same thing. So we can replace all of this with just a dollar sign. And we want to add the uh, hash symbol like that. Same thing as down here. And the syntax in jQuery is a little different. So we're actually going to do CSS color red. And for HTML, we're going to do and this should still run. There it is. So this still works, but it's been written differently um, because now we're using jQuery instead of just JavaScript. It's a lot shorter and a little easier to read. So let's do one other thing here before we're done, which is let's make the button toggle the text back and forth. The way we're going to do that is with uh, an if statement and a variable. So let's create a variable color equals blue. And then let's say if color is equal to, now notice I have three equal signs there. You can use two or three equal signs to compare things. You don't want to use one because one will set it equal. See here we have one equal sign. That says that color equals blue. But you can use multiple equal signs to say to compare things together. So we're comparing color to this text blue. Closing parentheses there. So now what we're saying is anytime color is equal to the text blue, run what is ever inside of these brackets. So what we're actually going to do is say color equals red. So if color is equal to blue, we're going to set it to red. Then we're going to say else brackets, closing brackets, color equals blue. And I just noticed I forgot quotation marks. So what we say is if the color is equal to blue, change it to red. Otherwise, change it to blue. So the first time this runs, it's going to say, oh yes, this is true. It's going to set it to red, and then it's going to skip down to here. The second time it runs, now color will be equal to red, so it's going to skip the first lot, this first part and say that's not true. So it's going to go to else and set the color to blue, and it'll just go back and forth between red and blue, red and blue, every time you click the button. But all we're doing is setting text in this variable. It's not actually going to do anything, so we need to delete out red and put color here. So now our color variable holds either the text red or blue, and our if statement with an else statement will swap them back and forth. So let's run that. And you can see now our color is swapping back and forth. So your challenge now 
is to get the text to switch back and forth. So instead of now, you can see the color changes, but the text doesn't. So load this up and try to get the text to change as well. And post in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll be back with another episode soon.